Now it's time for your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, June 19th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Colorado marijuana dispensary owner and 11 others indicted on 71 charges. This from the Denver Post. The Colorado grand jury has indicted 12 people on allegations that they ran a medical marijuana dispensary as a front for both an investment scam and an illegal marijuana growing operation. According to the indictment, 34-year-old Conley Hoskins owns three dispensaries, Jane Medicals and Higher Health Medical in Denver, and All Care Wellness Centers in Lakewood. All three dispensaries are shown as operating under pending license applications on a list of current dispensaries provided last month to the Denver Post. The indictment alleges that Hoskins and Dirk Mott, a partner with the help of others, schemed to solicit investments in the dispensaries, then diverted the money into other uses, such as paying off personal debts or debts from other businesses. In addition, the indictment alleges that Hoskins conspired with a marijuana grower to set up an illegal marijuana cultivation operation in the basement of a house in Windsor. According to the indictment, the grower, who is not charged in the indictment, ultimately grew 10 to 20 pounds of marijuana for Hoskins. According to the indictment, Hoskins teamed with another grower, 31-year-old Nathan Newman, to grow marijuana illegally in the basement of a house in Brighton. Marijuana from the illegal operations was taken to Jane Medicals, where employees sold it to both legal medical marijuana patients and to people who weren't medical marijuana patients, according to the indictment. The indictment also charges a doctor, 34-year-old Gerald Searle, another childhood friend of Hoskins, with having an unlawful relationship with a dispensary. Colorado law prohibits doctors from receiving anything of value from dispensaries. According to the indictment, Hoskins paid the rent on Searle's medical office in exchange for Searle writing medical marijuana recommendations to patients and referring them to Hoskins' dispensary, which was around the corner. Industrial hemp's future as a crop in Colorado awaits federal action from the steamboat pilot today. If industrial hemp can grow on the plains of Manitoba, it can grow in semi-arid northwest Colorado, Andrea Herman said Tuesday. Herman is recognized as one of the foremost experts in North America on the cultivation of industrial hemp for its valued fiber and oil, and she will be teaching a groundbreaking e-course on the subject at Oregon State University this fall. Steamboat Springs receives an average of 24 and a half inches of participation precipitation and hayden with a milder climate receives 18.6 inches annually the research done at oregon state in 2008 suggested hemp thrives in climates with at least 25 to 30 inches of water fertile loam soils and extended growing seasons farmers union spokesman mick McAllister said tuesday the biggest barrier to reviving industrial hemp as a cash crop in colorado isn't the amount of available annual moisture but the continuing federal ban on the plant Department of Justice urged to avoid pot showdown with the state from the Seattle Times. Seven congressional Democrats from Washington are pressuring the U.S. Department of Justice to honor the state's new recreational marijuana law, the delegation's first collective public statement on the issue. In a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder released Tuesday, the Democrats urged quick action by the agency to assure pot users and sellers that they won't, quote, be penalized by the federal government for activities legal under state law, end quote. The letter also said state regular de- the also... <clears throat> the late letter also said state regulators were working to keep tight reins on the pot market, including preventing marijuana exports and black markets. <laughs> marijuana advocate rolling his way to the White House from CBS Detroit. A local man said he is rolling to the White House. Curtis Kyle left his home in Taylor on Friday and hopes to make it to Washington, D.C. to talk with lawmakers about legalizing marijuana. Kyle has cerebral palsy and has used his wheelchair his whole life. He's use, mostly using back roads for the trips and is hoping to travel about 40 miles each day. His father, who recently passed away, was also a marijuana advocate. He walked from his home in Taylor to the White House in 1978, said Kyle. So I'm doing this in his honor, end quote. Miley Cyrus says, I think alcohol is way more dangerous than marijuana from Today.com. A few years ago, Miley Cyrus learned firsthand the perils of unguarded moments in the digital age when video surfaced of her using a bong, supposedly to smoke a legal substance called salvia, an incident she later spoofed on Saturday Night Live. While the pop singer doesn't exactly cop to smoking pot in a new interview with Rolling Stone's Rob Tannenbaum, she doesn't deny it either. Quote, I did a song with Snoop Dogg called Ashtrays and Heartbreaks, so people can put it together for themselves, Cyrus says. I don't, I think alcohol is way more dangerous than marijuana. People can be mad at me for saying that, but I don't care. I've seen a lot of people spiral down with alcohol, but I've never seen that happen with weed. Marijuana users tend to be more laid back, end quote, said Cyrus. 
This has been your 420 Radio News for Wednesday, June 19th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines with the Wall Street Journal and a look at the Box Canyon of medical marijuana. You're listening to the Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org.